I get my news from social media. Young people are completely, you know, not, not necessarily in a bad way, because I think everyone is, but completely attached to their phones. We're living in a generation where, where we are the most informed, um, and um, we can pretty much access any information that we want to, um, and we have so many choices of where to get that information from, which I personally think is wonderful. And I think that it could be used for so much good and um, to help us be a very um, yeah well well informed, intelligent, insightful group of people. Hi, I'm Taylor. And I'm Emma. Welcome to Influenced, the Got Your Back docu-series. This episode is called Faked. Today we are looking at fake news, what it is, how to spot it and how to avoid it altogether. The fake news. The fake Fake news. Fake news. Fake. Fake. We have to leave that word. We have a lot of political actors that have been weaponizing the term fake news to discredit any kind of media. Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us a question? A qu I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, Go ahead. can you stay categorical? So fake news actually refers to an intentional misrepresentation of reality with the intention of trying to change opinion about something. So we've he heard a lot of it at the moment about COVID, um, we've heard a lot of it about political agendas, but essentially it comes down to somebody intentionally giving you information that might be inaccurate or purposefully changing the truth to get a desired result. Fake news can definitely be damaging. Fake news can be damaging to people, industries. I think if someone's, if someone's spreading fake news about an event or about a person, then to try and rectify that, it's often harder than the news story getting out in the first place. I don't think it's exclusive to newspapers, television, radio. I think it comes a lot into social media because there's so many rumours that get started on social media that have absolutely no back into them. To begin with, the hardest thing from fake news is spotting it because you get it thrown at you all the time and all of us as human beings don't have those opportunities to go back and really interrogate and pick apart everything we see. So we tend to see something flash up in a news column or something come up on, an, uh, on a social media report or a platform and go, oh, that's real. I spend a lot of my time correcting myths and things that people picked up from, you know, the school, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, so I think social media just kind of amplifies the potential for people to pick up fake news, things that aren't true. It can create negative behaviours because it can lead to a lot of hatred. I think the way that news is shared on media, both online and offline, is a lot of it, and often very, very opinionated. Some people share the headlines and it can be a bit deceitful like the headline isn't always what the article is and you know it's like clickbait it brings you in i'll go on um snapchat and they have like the sun online stories and things and they're often either so far from the truth it's unreal or you'll read the headline and you'll think wow and then you'll read the actual news story and you're thinking but the headline didn't match. As a reporter, you've got a big responsibility, you've got huge audiences, and you have a responsibility to make sure the news that you're delivering is accurate, informative, and in, in public interest. It could be more difficult, maybe, if you're following certain people, to get a balanced argument, and maybe not always as interested in finding out something. If you agree with something, you maybe won't necessarily go and look for what some of the other um, opinions are on that. And I think if you solely find all of your um, news off social media, it's really tricky to find the reliable sources because you can just hear it from any random person. So I think it's really important that you find the reliable sources, you know, the verified accounts and try and make sure you've taken into account that people have different outlooks and people will sort of twist the story slightly to fit what they're trying to say. You're going to be reading news that's tailored towards your opinion which is what social media is. It's an algorithm, it's tailored towards you and what you want and what you're liking. And if what you're liking is against a news story, then the news you're receiving is going to be so opinionated and you're gonna get a completely different story than if you're reading an unbiased piece of news in a newspaper. Essentially, 
people move faster than the media itself. So we go to things like Twitter and we see people's opinions and like first-hand reports before we actually see our print media and our news media actually catch up. So that there is there is a, always an issue of spreading misinformation or an issue of um, the wrong story getting out and everybody having to recap. It takes one influential person and there's a lot of people who have massive followers on social media now. So if one of those people exploits that responsibility with all these people who see them as an influence and says something that's false or, or accuses someone of something that they haven't done, one, it's defamation, and two, it's fake news and it's misleading an audience and that can leave a lasting impression on people. If I was gonna give everybody advice about how to use online media, it would be learn how to go, hang on a second. Here are some strategies to shield yourself from fake news. Are you familiar with the source? Is it legitimate? Has it been reliable in the past? If not, you may not want to trust it. If a provocative headline drew your attention, read a little further before you decide to pass along the shocking information. Even in legitimate news stories, the headline doesn't always tell the whole story. We know this is difficult. Confirmation bias leads people to put more stock in information that confirms their beliefs and discount information that doesn't. But the next time you're automatically appalled at some social media post concerning, say, a politician you oppose, take a moment to check it out. Try this simple test. What other stories have been posted to the news website that is the source of the story that just popped up in your social media feed? You may be predisposed to believe a story about a politician you don't like, but if the alleged news site also features a story about guardians from Antarctica retaliating against America by hitting New Zealand with an earthquake, maybe you should think twice before sharing. And yes, that earthquake story is a real example of a fake story that popped up. That's a useful guide, but we found it's not just fake news stories that can mislead us. Headline writers, influencers, and just about anyone we follow online can change how we see the world. Let's listen to what experts have to say. I don't know how bad it is in the UK right now, but in America there's about 44 million people who believe in uh, QAnon. In America it's pretty, it's pretty bad. It's almost like a mind disease. There, it's just... Uh, I don't, I don't know how people are going to come back. So tell us what happened to your friend. It, it's, it's something that happened over years. It, it's not this instant thing. It was, it was where uh, over time he became more and more unhinged. He's not dumb. He's got a master's degree in engineering. He's, he's accomplished. Everything's there. It's not, there's no issues about intelligence. His brain became hardened, not plastic anymore, not able to take in new ideas, not able to take in opposing viewpoints, not being able to take in information of reality. Me and him, you know, we went to college together. He was my best friend in college. And, you know, we were brothers uh, practically. And it, it you know, so this is a person I can talk about anything to. And he became someone that I can't talk about anything about. I thought that we were family for forever. And the first thing I noticed was that <clears throat> the number of topics we could talk about just getting smaller and smaller and smaller because something would set him off, whether it was the news, it was politics, something would just set him off and he would just go off the rails and go go down another road. I'll give you an example. Like, he was a firm believer that there is this pizzeria in DC that was a hub for child sex trafficking. I think it was, it's called Comet Pizza, I think. And this conspiracy, this QAnon conspiracy got so bad that one guy like crossed three, two uh, state lines with a machine gun and like you know invaded the pizzeria saying he's gonna save the kids where's the basement and the workers there were like there is no basement we're on a hill like it's a one floor store and the guy with a machine gun is ready to kill people thinking he's a hero of the story and when it eventually realized like there was a police standoff and he realized there's no basement and he got arrested and like my, my friend was a firm believer that this pizzeria was a legit sex trafficking hotspot. 
and that he would cite these news that I couldn't find anywhere. He would cite, he would tell me, you know, like details that like, like, you know, this, the, this pizzeria was so attacked by all these great Americans who were involved in this thing that like they would put out like, Mrs. was like, please, we're not this, you know, we're just a pizzeria spot and this and the other. And like, there's just constantly times when I'm just like, I can't believe like what you've become and what's happened to, to one of the smartest people I, I knew. The most em empathetic person I knew became the least empathetic person. Hatred, hated people, started hated just full of hate and fear he's i mean i i hope in all the world that he uh he comes back so the the formal definition of fake news is is that something that's false something that you know they're saying out there that's not real in practical terms though fake news seems to be a derogative a slur towards that people whose brains have melted down. And if you show them like reality, if you show them sources, whether it's scientific or whether it's the news or whether it's your own experience, they'll call fake news. There's just this like instant reaction. Like, oh, that's fake news. Oh, that's a lie. You're, you've been fed, you've been fed lies or like, oh, you believe everything you read? Like, it's like that. Misinformation is about someone who's misinformed or is misinforming, but the intentions are not wrong. Disinformation is when someone has negative intentions, has uh, the, the intent to lead you astray, to give you a lie. That's disinformation. So it's this subtle difference, but it's important because I don't think the vast majority of people realize that they're spreading lies. Taylor, have you ever fallen for fake news? Yeah, and you feel pretty stupid when you do. Don't worry about it, it happens to everyone. But what can we do to stop it happening? Let's find out. You've really got to be careful and look through what you're looking at. Is it from a news source that you trust potentially? Um, and look look for other sides of the argument because nothing's black and white, there's, there's always more to it. You've got to look for different voices, so I make sure I follow a wide range of voices on social media and learn the signs of where people may be giving in an opinion instead of maybe fact, or where we're looking at information that might be hearsay rather than actually like researched. You need to read the full story. And now, I think something that I have seen, which is really good, is that if you try and share something on Twitter anyway, it says, are you sure you want to share this? You haven't read the full article. And I think that's a good way of stopping it and making you think, actually, no, I haven't read it. Let's see what it's all about rather than just make an assumption off the headline. If you want to be better at finding fake news, finding misinformation in the sources that you read, um, on the profiles that you uh, like uh, follow. Um, I would recommend just making sure that you are A, if it's a website, is the website like legit? Have a, have a look at what the website's saying overall. Is it something that is like a far right, far left, politically leaning, whatever way website? Is it, um, like, uh, even, is it even a media website? D that kind of, just look, just think critically about what you're looking at. Thanks for watching Influence. The series is brought to you by the Got Your Back editorial board. Friends of Got Your Back and experts who support our work. See you again. Thank you.